Hello and welcome to Code Sketch. So you want to know everything about React? We have a tough task at hand as we will be covering all these topics in this video. Let's just start and see where it takes us. As we've constantly been reminded on the web, React is a library, so don't you dare call it a framework. It was created by an engineer, not Dan Abramoff, at Meta, formerly Facebook. Yes, the social network for people experiencing their midlife crisis. You might already be aware of how HTML lets us write code that makes stuff show up on the browser. React does something similar. We can write code with React that can make stuff show up inside a DOM node of your choice. React takes control of a particular node from the HTML and then handles all the rendering inside of it. So how do we tell HTML which node to hand over to React? Well, we create an HTML file and somewhere in the HTML code, we pick a node which we want to be controlled by React. It can be the topmost one or an inner one. In this case, it is the div with the ID of root. Then inside of our JavaScript file, we get hold of that div and create a root on it using the create root method that React DOM provides us. And inside of that root, React will render our majestic React application, which in this case is the h1 tag that says hello world. But if all that sounds too overwhelming just to set up an app, you are not alone. This is where tools like Weed come into the picture. It is a module bundler that does several other things for us. We need to run the command npm create wheat latest and we are greeted with a scaffolded react project with the create root and render part taken care of. So we can directly start writing react code inside of the app.jsx file. Now that we are writing code, let's see how react creates user interfaces from code. We saw that we were able to render this HTML looking stuff inside of the root div. This is a react element. Although it looks very similar to HTML, it is react's own markup language called JSX. JSX provides us with an easier way to create React elements. If not for JSX, this simple React element would have to be created like this. It is simple because it has just a string as the child. But a child could be anything, even another React element, and that gets pretty messy pretty soon. So let us thank God for JSX and move on. You can check out the detailed video about JSX here. The next important thing to know about is components. Components are the atomic units of React the building blocks that form the bigger picture. In modern functional React development, a component is a function that returns a React element. So this is an example of a simple component that returns the element we saw before. It can even return several nested elements like this. But the real use case where components shine is when they accept props or properties that are passed from the parent to the child component. This way, the parent can customize the child component's output. For instance, look at this say hi React component. It accepts props one of which is the name prop. It is then returning a React element interpolating the name prop with hey added before it. With that in place, a parent React component can call the say hi component by supplying different values for the name props. And the say hi component would render different results like so. Now that is reusability pro max, isn't it? So we now know that React executes this function and the React element that gets returned from it gets reflected in the browser. When the parent sends a new set of props, the newly generated element gets shown on the browser. But then, what if the props don't change? What if something internal to the component changes and that needs to be reflected on the browser? How will React know when to re-execute the function and get the newly returned element? That is where state comes into picture. State can be thought of as a piece of data on which the UI depends. So basically, the UI that is rendered on the browser can be thought of as a function of props and state. Whenever a piece of state in the component changes, React makes sure to execute the function, that is, the component, again and get the fresh React element that gets generated as a result. React provides us with a hook-based API to create state. The useState function here returns us with a state value along with a function to set the new value. Calling this set function is how we tell React to execute the function component again to recompute the latest JSX elements. After learning that, you might be thinking, so React executes the function every single time whenever even a small piece of state changes? Wouldn't that be suboptimal? Why isn't React slow? Well, the creators of React are smart people and this is where React's trademark reconciliation algorithm and virtual DOM comes into the picture. It basically makes sure that only the bare minimum tweaks are made to the browser DOM. I have a whole separate video on the React reconciliation algorithm if you are interested. Moving on, the apps that we create through React are called SPAs or single page apps. That is because when the app is initially loaded on the browser, all the JavaScript required to run the app is sent to the browser. Then the JavaScript code is executed on the browser to create the UI. Technically speaking, the page never refreshes after that. But 
We can navigate to different routes using libraries like React Router. The library makes sure to load the particular component defined for a particular route and also updates it on the browser address bar so they remain in sync. As you might have noticed, downloading the entire app bundle on the browser and executing it there is not optimal. And that's why there exist other solutions where the entire UI is rendered on the server and the rendered HTML is sent to the browser. This is called as SSR aka server side rendering and Next.js is a framework providing this capability in-house. Here's a separate video about Next.js. The React component cannot function as a standalone entity disconnected from the external world. That is why we need to make API or database calls at some point of time. This is where effects come to the picture and React provides the use effect hook for this purpose. The function that we pass to use effect gets executed outside the normal flow of code of the function component. The code is executed once after the component is mounted and then only when the dependency described in this dependency array changes. The React state that we saw before was confined to a single component. But in a large application, there is a need to share state across components. The component should have the ability to tweak the shared state and also be able to detect changes when another component modifies a portion of the state. This is where third-party state management libraries come into the picture. The most popular one is Redux, but there are plenty of others. Libraries like Zestand, Xstate, Jotai, Signia, and Recoil all achieve the same end result via different methodologies. We'll cover them in future videos if you are interested. Do comment below with your favorite. That's about state management. But hey, we don't want to build ugly looking apps, do we? That's where styling comes into the picture. There are traditional methods where we can assign classes inside of JSX and then define those classes inside of CSS or SAS files. There's also the less expected way where you can just write all your styles inside of your style object that can be passed to any JSX tag that is mostly reserved for when the world falls into anarchy. But similar to state management, there are plenty of third-party solutions for styling your apps. There's style components, emotion, chakra UI, good old bootstrap, there's tailwind which has a cult-like following and then pico CSS which is highly underrated. And then there are 2000 others which I cannot talk about in this video. So that is where I'll try to wrap up this video and hope that I delivered on the promise of teaching you everything there is to know about React. Let me know what I missed so that I can create a part 2 for you. In the meanwhile, check out this video to know how re-rendering works in React. See you in the next one.